Hi everyone! I'm sure that many of you have seen the ragdoll simulation in many video games. It's very useful for simulating the character falling down and colliding with objects. And now you can do this in Cascadeur. In this video I'm gonna quickly show you how you can use it and control the end result. First things first, you have to make sure that the rig you're using is up to date. Most importantly that it contains the collision capsules. Otherwise you have to regenerate the rig using the quick rigging tool. Now let's create a very simple animation where the character is just standing there. And turn on auto physics. You can enable the ragdoll simulation in a dedicated tab in the physics settings. Turning it on however will disable other physics filters which means you have to use the ragdoll and auto physics one after another or maybe use them on different intervals. Once the ragdoll is on, the simulation will begin and you can see the results on the green ghost as you would with auto physics. With the default settings, the character simply fell down. Reducing the ragdoll slider will make the character more rigid. If you set the ragdoll filter all the way up to 100, the character will become fully limp and will collapse to the ground without trying to keep the initial pose. The poses, however, do affect the ragdoll. And by changing the poses, you can change the ragdoll animation as well. But keep in mind that the higher the filter setting is, the less effective the poses you set will be. For example, let's add a couple of keyframes and animate the character's arms. So between the frames 40 and 60, I want the character to raise their arms and then copy the last frame of the animation to keep the pose. And as you can see, this animation plays on the ragdoll as well. As a rule, in most cases, you would want to enable the ragdoll only on the intervals where you want the simulation to happen. As an example, I will create a simple animation where a cube collides with the character. I'll add a cube in Cascadeur, make sure to add it to a new layer, change its size, and I think at about frame 20, get it to collide with our character. But to make them interact with each other, you also have to enable the collision for the cube. With the cube selected, go to Command Collision Add Box. Right now, the cube slows down towards the last frame of the animation, since this is how the Bezier interpolation works. I'll create an additional keyframe next to the last frame to have a better control over the speed at which the cube collides with the character. And also be able to quickly change it should I want to. Now we need to select the interval when we want the ragdoll animation to happen, including the extra frame that we created. In the physics settings, make sure that work on interval is on, turn on auto physics and enable ragdoll. The speed at which the cube hits the character will affect the result. Which, in terms of keyframes, means the more distance it covers within this interval, the higher its speed is. And the further the character will fly in the simulation. You can use this principle when animating kicks and punches or various collisions. Another example when the ragdoll can come in handy is to simulate the character hanging down. To make sure that the character will hold on to the bar, you need to set its collision material to pin. And when it's done, we can turn on the ragdoll. This becomes really handy when simulating the character holding on to a moving object. Along with changing the overall ragdoll strength, you can change the parameters for every single point of the character individually. We'll quickly go through some of them. Select the points and in the Object Properties, open up the Ragdoll tab. If you use the Quick Rigging tool to rig your character, each point will have its individual preset values for local stiffness and local damping. Let's go through some of them. So, local stiffness determines how much the given point tries to maintain its position in the local coordinate space. Simply put, if I want the hand to maintain its position like it does on the pose that I've set, 
I will have to increase the local stiffness for the points of the right arm. Global stiffness works the same way, but in a global coordinate system instead. Local damping affects the shakes and bounces. The higher the value is, the quicker the points will stop shaking. We'll go through the rest of the settings in the additional video. You can play with the values as much as you want, but the default settings should give a decent result in the majority of cases. This is our first take on the ragdoll in Cascadure and there's a lot of things we want to improve, but even now you can get cool results and have a lot of fun.